You can't make an Iron Maiden out of paper. It's an Iron Maiden, not a paper maiden. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this Iron Maiden. It's a 12 scale miniature, and it's for my Adams Family dollhouse and it is mostly made out of paper. The body is paper towel. Can you hear that? And it's not soft or anything, so yay! <laughs> the face is paper clay and the hinges are paper, so yeah, it's mostly paper. I've got some foam board and a little bit of metal, but um, for the most part, this is a paper Iron Maiden. So I hope you'll enjoy the video. Let's get started! The first thing I did was draw out a 12 scale version of what the inside of the Iron Maiden would be like so that a 12 scale person could fit into it. I then created a interior form using plastic bags, aluminum foil, and masking tape. And I just went back and forth with these three items until I was happy with the form and it felt smooth enough to create a shell on top of. I glued the form onto an upside down paint palette. This was just to give it some stability while I was creating the shell. I created a paste out of water, flour, and tacky glue. I don't have the exact measurements, I just kind of mixed it until I had a thick, milky type substance. I then took paper towels and one at a time just dipped it into the paste and applied it to the form. I did this several times, but each time I dried in between the layers. This is a long process, so make sure you have something to entertain yourself in between each drying time. It's important to make sure each layer dries because you do not want the layers underneath to be mushy or create mold. I did about six layers to get the thickness that I wanted. After my paper towel shell felt completely dry and hardened, I removed it from the paint palette so I could begin working with it. I decided to go ahead and cover the outside with wood filler, and I felt like this would take away the paper towel texture, and it would also give the shell a little bit of rigidity as I decided to cut it apart. Also wait for this layer to dry completely as well. It's a lot of dry time. <laughs> After it's completely dry, I sanded it down just to get it as smooth as possible. Because this is supposed to be an Iron Maiden made of metal, it should be a very smooth texture. Looking at a reference I found online, I decided where I wanted the Iron Maiden to open. So I did a line down the sides and over the top of the Iron Maiden, and then made a small door on the left side of the Iron Maiden so that it could open in front. Use a sharp, sharp blade for this. I started off using a dull blade and I regretted it. So make sure you use a sharp blade. I'm gonna cut into the form and it's nice because you can feel the blade hit the aluminum foil and you know that you have cut all the way through. Even though I let there be plenty of drying time between each layer, as I took these off I still realized the paper towel underneath was still damp. This is because paper towel absorbs, that's what it does. So I made sure I let all these pieces dry on their own again overnight so everything was 100% dry. After that, I applied a layer of wood glue on all three pieces. Wood glue dries incredibly hard, and so I felt like this would give some further rigidity to the form. I did that on both the outside and the inside of all the pieces. Next, I'm making the base out of a foam board, and I'm just kind of eyeing it. I didn't measure it out completely. I wanted it to look very handmade. This is supposed to be a um, torture device from the medieval times, ages, and so nothing has to be super perfect. And I'm also going to put a layer of wood glue over this so that the texture of the base matches the texture of the form. Now I'm placing where I want my spikes to be, and Iron Maiden is a torture device if you don't know. It has spikes on the inside, 
and so I want to use my hand drill to create holes and I'm going to use toothpicks to put into those holes to create the spike effect. I'm putting the Iron Maiden half down and putting in the spikes so that they do not go too far into the project. I do not want them to hit the spikes when the doors close. And then I just mark them with a pencil and cut them off. And now I'm using wood glue again to put them into the holes so that they are very secure. I do the same process on all three pieces of the Iron Maiden. After you've finished that, you can take wood glue, smooth it over the holes in the back, and then sand it down once it's dry. You can do this as many times as you want until you have a smooth surface. After that, I'm going to go ahead and glue down the back piece to the base. I'm using hot glue initially, but I will also cover it with a layer of wood glue. Next, I need to make the face for my Iron Maiden. I'm going to use a Barbie doll and put a low temp hot glue cover on her face to create a mold of her face. This is the first time I've used paper clay and I really enjoyed it. It was really easy to work with. I'm just going to take some paper clay, put it into the mold, and get a face shape just to start out the face that I want for my Iron Maiden. You can always adjust it so that it's not so happy. I made it a more of a frowny face with closed eyes, but it was really helpful to have that face shape to begin with. Next, I worked on the collar of the Iron Maiden by creating a snake of paper clay, rolling it flat, and then I apply it to the Iron Maiden with some tacky glue, and then smooth it into the face. I'm going to use a sharp tool after that to create lines to make the collar effect. Once that's done, I'm going to roll out the little pointed hood that you see on many of the Iron Maidens. And um, that took a little bit of work to get it attached, um, but I also put some clay behind the hood. I don't show all of that, but um, the paper clay was awesome to work with. No regrets on using that. I ended up being very happy with her face, except it's tiny bit off center, but there was no way I was going to start again just for that. Now I'm moving on to making the hinges. I'm cutting quarter inch strips of paper. This is cardstock paper, and I am going to use that with a toothpick and some wood glue. I'm going to wrap it around until I get kind of a big roll of paper on there. I'm okay with making some chunkier hinges on here because if this is an iron object, the hinges are going to be rather massive. So I have my first roll glued on there. The second roll of the hinge is not going to be glued onto the toothpick. I am just going to glue it onto itself, making sure that the hole in the middle is big enough to fit around the toothpick. I'm going to take a Sharpie to make the inside of the hinge black. That's going to be difficult to paint once the hinge is put together, so I'm just trying to think ahead to save myself some problems in the future. So now I'm going to slip on the piece I made earlier, so it is not glued to the toothpick and can move freely. The third piece I'm putting on is glued again. It is very similar to the first piece and I'm just wrapping it around until the size of the paper roll matches that of the first one. So now I have a hinge that has two pieces going off to the side on the left and one on the right and because the center one is not glued it can move back and forth freely. I'm going to make four of these to complete my Iron Maiden. After my paper clay face has dried, I want to add another layer of wood glue so that I can keep the texture from the body the same as the texture on the face. This is going to give a very smooth type texture um, like you would see on a finished metal piece from that time.
Now I'm going to start trying to piece the item together. Because this is homemade, it was a little bit fiddly, so I'm not showing exactly how I got everything on there, but the easiest way I found was to glue the two pieces to the main body all over and let that dry completely. And then I'm going to start adding on the doors one at a time, starting with the main door and then adding the smaller door afterwards. Here is the Iron Maiden with the doors on. You can see that it opens. It is a little bit difficult to open, difficult to shut, but I imagine one from the medieval ages would have been difficult as well. You can see the back where all the hinges are attached. I also added two more little rolls of cardstock on the front to make a closing device. I can just stick a rod through. And then I also made two little handles on the front. You see that a lot in Iron Maiden's references that I found online. It's just a ring of metal and then I wrapped twine around it and then covered that in more wood glue. Now I'm going to put a base coat on of black paint. This is where you want to be very careful with your paper hinges because you can very easily paint them shut. So I was very light on my layers over the hinges, just taking my time and making sure I was not painting anything together. I'm going to do a layer of black on the outside and the inside, making sure that I get all the sides of my spikes. After that, I'm going to use a silver metallic paint. You can use a different color if you want, but a lot of the Iron Maidens I see definitely have a silver tint. After that is complete, you can see it is very shiny, almost a little bit too shiny. So of course, like always, I'm going to make sure that I age it. The best way I've found to age a metal looking miniature is to use watered down black paint and you just make sure it gets into all the grooves anywhere that dust or dirt, or in this case blood, might have accumulated over the years. I'm going to make sure I pay special attention to the face and I may even use a little bit of thicker black paint on the face to make sure that all those features are accentuated. Next I'm just going to take some gold paint very, very lightly, very subtly. I am going to add a little bit to the edges of the metal. This is because a lot of times when skin or oils from skin touches metal, it can discolor it. And so I want this to look like it has been used many times. And um, so it's hard to see on camera. You may be able to see it a little bit in the end, but I'm just adding a little bit of a gold highlight to the face and to the edges so that it just looks very used and very worn. For the most part, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. There's definitely some things I would change. I really wish her face was centered. Um, uh, but really, for a first time ever making an Iron Maiden, I'm pretty excited about it. And I think it'll be a great accessory to my Adams Family project. That's all I have for you today. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like this video, subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you'll know as soon as I upload the next video. I'll see you guys then. Bye.